Tractor's on the front porch singing old familiar song. The tractor's in the barn and the pastor's freshly mown. Looking through the screen door, the aroma draws you in to the heart of the home where old memories begin. Cooking with her friends, sharing recipes together, stories and songs, making new memories the heart of the home. Hi, I'm Sherry Martin. Tonight on Heart of the Home, I'm really happy to introduce my guest, Bill Senyard. And if you don't know Bill singing, he's with First Mountain City Quartet. Bill, um, you sing lead, right? Mm -hmm. You sing lead. And y'all have been together, what, six years? As a group, probably about 10 years. Okay. But, uh, singing with the current group, about four years with the current people. Well, I love your music. And, and you and I also promote other gospel music in this area, don't we? Right. Once a year, we bring in the inspirations. And right. we brought the Diplomats. And we brought Barry Scott and Second Wind, which mm -hmm. was a really good hit. And now, we're here to promote your new CD that has my favorite song on it. And what's it called? It's called He Is Mine, I Am His, but I thought they were all your favorites. Oh, maybe they are. Maybe they are. But now, Barry Scott will tell you, on my ringtone on my phone, I've got We Shall Inherit. We need to change it, don't we? To sure. Bill Senyard in First Mountain City. We'll do that. We'll do that. Now, today, guys, I'm going to share the simplest recipe. And when we thought about today's show, I wanted something that folks use all the time, a peach cobbler. And my peach cobbler recipe is the world's easiest. I've given it to a lot of folks and sometimes they'll call me and say, it just didn't work. It didn't taste like yours. I put too much milk in it. Honey, it doesn't have any milk in it. It only has butter, flour, sugar, peaches, and brown sugar. So remember the recipe, guys. It's going to be a simple one. Butter, flour, sugar, brown sugar. So easy. And peaches and buy the cheapest brand of peaches you can find. I buy them in light syrup and use the um, cheapest thing you can find on the market. Now we're going to put this together quickly and we're going to bake it. Are you going to sing to me today? I don't know. I, I have to eat first. Oh, you have to eat first. Okay, guys. We're going to get this recipe started. Now remember, I always use white lily flour. Now, Bill, reckon you can open those peaches for me? Uh, maybe so. While I melt this pound of butter, I'm going to melt a pound of butter in the microwave. And to that, I will add our white sugar and our brown sugar. I mean, our white sugar and our flour. And you're going to add the brown sugar to the peaches. I if we can get this can opener to work. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. How's it going? Oh, there it goes. There you go. There you go. I had to squeeze a little harder. Right. And, and really and truly, I do buy the peaches with light syrup because you add that little kick of brown sugar. And folks who've tried this recipe say, what's different about it? It is that little kick of brown sugar. So... And this cobbler, um, today, after we make it, you're going to deliver it to Jasper Banking Company because they asked me Friday if I'd make them a peach cobbler, and I knew we were going to be doing this, and I thought this would be a good, good day to do that. So we're going to send Mr. Mark Whitfield a peach cobbler. Now we're going to microwave this, melt the butter. Now, Bill, we're going to use three cans of peaches for this size cobbler. Remember, we're going to send this up to Jasper Banking Company, and they've got a pretty big crowd to fix. This is about the size I would take to homecoming at church. Does Melissa make peach cobblers? Yes, she does. Uh, it's very good, too. Good for you. That was a good, that was a I smart can, statement, son. <laughs> I, can always eat, I can always eat every bit of it, too. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to say, I bet yours is better than hers. No, that's not a smart man. You're not only good looking, you're smart <laughs> and sing. Well, my goodness, I could do a resume on you, couldn't I? <laughs> you, you just don't get out very much. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Bill and I have had so much fun working in the gospel music industry. We love bringing good groups to town, and we like hearing them, don't we? Do sure we do it. this just because we like the music? Probably so, and then we hope everybody else just tags along and likes That's it right. That's right. Okay, guys, we've used three large cans of peaches. Now, Bill, I want you to add me half a can of hot water. We're going to add a half a can of hot water to this. And we're going to put about half a cup of brown sugar. And remember, the brown sugar adds that little bit of taste. Right in? Yep. Go right in. There you go. How easy is this? And the crust is really the easy part, guys. And remember, you only use 
the butter is the only liquid in this recipe. So it's butter and equal amounts of flour and sugar. And for this, I'm gonna use about a cup and a half of each because this is a large cobbler. So um, we're gonna use about a cup and a half and brown this thing. Now I'm gonna put it in the oven at 400 degrees and it takes about 45 minutes to get it done, so. That's, that's too long, I'm hungry. Uh, you're hungry, okay. Sorry, it's gonna take about 45 minutes. Now, when this is done, do we need ice cream with this? Uh, yes, vanilla. Ice cream or fat-free Cool Whip. Vanilla ice cream. Vanilla ice cream, okay. Maybe somebody will have that on sale because you know I'm a bargain shopper. Now, we are going to get the butter out and we're gonna make, this is the easiest crust in the world. I think my Aunt Bessie taught me this. And now, guys, we're gonna add sugar to the melted pound of butter. And then we're gonna add the same amount of white lily flour. And you know, I always use white lily. I have this thing. You know white lily ought to do an endorsement for me, shouldn't they? they should, yeah. Man, do you know how many pounds of this I've used in my lifetime? Couldn't tell you. A bunch. That's what I told somebody at church. I said, I gotta keep my wrinkles full, so I use white lily and make biscuits. Now this does make a great crust, guys. And it is so easy. Pound of butter. This will probably make two large cobblers, and it's just enough to take to church. And I buy these pans because I learned one day I got to church and most of the cobbler was in the back of my car. That was not a good thing. Well, not only that, when you leave church, you don't ever get your bowls back. That's right. That's right. That's right. Now, y'all are going to be singing at Crossroads Baptist Church Saturday, Sunday, next Sunday evening, aren't right. you? Yeah, we'll June the 3rd. We'll be all around North Georgia and Tennessee sitting yes. Right. That's great. Now, Bill, this is the easiest crust, and all you do, you see the consistency? Mm -hmm. You just kind of drop it on there, and when it bakes, it forms its own little crust on top, and I can't wait for you to try this. Now, last year at Mike Hawkins Homecoming, we had this. Did you try any of it then? I tried everything you had. Now, yeah. Bill, there's no way you could have tried everything we had. The little ladies on the widow wagon helped, and we had some great, great food, didn't we? We sure did. We had some great food. We had some great fellowship. Great desserts. Great desserts. Great desserts. That's one thing about the ladies on the widow wagon. They really try to outdo each other. And I love that. I love that everybody brings their favorite dishes. Okay, this is going to be a great one. Okay, guys, we're going to stick this in the oven. And when we come back, it's going to be hot and bubbly. And we're going to enjoy it. I wish you could taste it. I wish you could smell it. The brown sugar smells great. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back now. Welcome back, guys. Bill has got to sneak away because you've got something else to do today. Thank you so much for coming by. Sure. You're going to come back when the peach cobbler's done. I understand yeah. you just had another appointment, and I thank you for coming by here. So um, remember, check in with Bill. Thank you for coming to see me. Thank you so thank much. You. I'll see you later. Can't wait to see that peach cobbler. It'll be done, just a little bit. Heart of the home really is the kitchen, and we are in my favorite kitchen. But at Harris Farm, the yards are also part of my favorite, favorite thing. There are flowers here who have been here since the late 1800s. And when I moved in, I brought some things. One of my favorite things was a rose bush. And my daughter Angela is joining us now. Angela has hey. been out to, hey sweetheart, thanks for coming. You're welcome. Angela has been out to the yard and picked some of my favorite roses. Now these bloom around Mother's Day and Angela's gonna show us how you can take the simplest old blue mason jar that we happen to have lots of at Harris Farm and turn it into a really simple arrangement. Now this has, all these things are native to the area and the roses, I just happen to be lucky enough to have some really beautiful rose bushes here, mm -hmm. don't we? Yes. And, and with the drought, I'm a little concerned about them because roses take a lot of water. So yeah. um, I've been nervous about that. We have a lot of iris and we have a lot of canter lilies and I share those. And usually in the spring, I split them up and I give them hundreds of them to neighbors. But this year I was afraid to. Mm -hmm. I was afraid to because this drought's been dangerous. Um, but you found these and did a great job. Now, we all know the joke, I can't tie a bow. I sent you to floral school, I can't tie a bow. I can't wire roses, I'm not the floral designer. Can't do that, but you do a great job. Thank you. And this, tell me how simple that was. Uh, it's very simple. Um, it's basically just put a base of some greenery inside and, and I just freely stuck them in there. There's not really any um, design to it. It's just because the mouth is so small, just stand them in there and they, they pretty much do their thing. Now, the one thing you did teach me is you use odd numbers. 
Most of the time, yes, it's odd yes. You yes. use three, five, seven. You don't do because I did something one day and you laughed and you said I can tell Mama did that. Yeah. Because Mama is not the floral designer now. Mama's good cook. You know we've got a peach Very cobbler good. going. Yes. We've got we've got a world famous peach cobbler going. We're ready for it. Mama can cook, but I am not a floral designer. So and I laugh about it a lot because she tried to teach me to make bows. And it was kind of like my grandmother teaching me to make biscuits. She gave up on me. And I can't make biscuits. You either. can't make biscuits, but I'm not giving up on you. Okay. I'm not giving up on you. The first biscuits I made, guys, I threw them out. Mama lived at Talking Rock. I made the biscuits. My brother walked around, looked at them. Mama looked at them, and they said, you have got to be kidding me. So I threw them out. The dog walked around looking at them, and the dog wouldn't even eat them. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> Cooking is They're an art. Well, okay. cooking is like floral designing. It's an art, and it takes a little practice. So mm -hmm. I've practiced a lot now. I've mm -hmm. made thousands of biscuits now, and they're edible now. Very now, good. Angela, I want you to show me an old coffee pot that I found here at Harris Farm. And you made us an arrangement in it, and basically no cost. Now, show us the container. This is the red and white enamel from, what is that, the 40s? Mm-hmm. I have pots and pans and I have and a dish pan that matches this. Yeah. And then we have the lid stuck on the side. Right, right. And so, it's not very pretty, so we just camouflaged it with greenery. Right, right. And this was simple too. What did it take you? Ten minutes? Yeah. This you is know, we should do floral design classes. Could you teach me? Sure. Anybody can learn anything. Right, except me, because you've tried teaching me to make no. bows. But this, guys, if you have your grandmother's coffee pot. This is a great way to share it. And you know, Angela did this for me for Mother's Day. And it was a great gift because she knew I love this coffee pot. And um, for many years, because I collect Coca-Cola, I also have a lot of the red and white enamel ware. You can still find them at flea markets and antique shops. And um, I found this at the barn at Harris Farm. And you know, part of the best times of being at Harris Farm is going through the old buildings. I mm -hmm. love it. Mm -hmm. There's so much history here. The farm's been here since 1860, as far as the Harris family residing here, and the Indians resided here in 1835. So the history here is rich, and I do love it, and I invite you to come and see us. Um, we are just outside Talking Rock, Georgia, and if you're in the area, hang around. Come mm -hmm. sit on the porch just a little bit. We love this porch, don't we? We do. It's a great porch, and uh, great cows out in the pasture, too. You can hear them mooing, can't you? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. This, this is still old-time farming community, and we love this area. Now, Angela, for this, could you just go to Michael's or anywhere and pick these flowers up? Absolutely. Use the Easy. colors that match your kitchen. Very simple. Basic. Yeah, and, and you could change uh, if this. If you have scraps of green, even, um, you know, there's some different pieces in here that we just had one or two laying around the shop, and just mix them together. So right. That, you, you get a different look and you don't have to spend on a new bunch of greenery when you've just got some scrap laying around. Right. Some ivy and fern and just throw it all together. And these are great for spring and summer, but in the fall you could replace these with fall flowers or fall uh, leaves, couldn't you? Absolutely. That yes. would be neat. They're, they're just basically stuck in. Right. Really simple. Stick right. it back. No problem. And guys, one day, one day, I promise on camera, I will let her try to teach me to make a bow, and y'all will love it. It's one of these will be a blooper. You'll yeah. never forget because I cannot make a bow. I cannot make a bow. Anybody and I've tried. can learn. No, 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 no. You can learn to make biscuits. Practice, I'm going to practice. Practice, practice. This is a simple bow. What is this? A nine? How many loops are in that? I didn't really. One, two, three, four. Didn't count them. Seven. Seven, seven loops. Seven and she, and seven. Yeah, and, and you keep telling me it's simple. But, but remember, guys, use what you have around the house. Use your grandmother's old mason jars. Use your old coffee pots. And one of my favorite things was something you made me in a dish pan a long ago. I had a little fountain made in an antique dish pan. I love antique dish mm -hmm. pans. Um, used to use them to make jelly until I found out the Blue Star sells it cheaper than mm -hmm. I can make it. Mm -hmm. So I don't make jelly anymore. Unless Do you remember? Blackberry. Blackberry. One summer I made 550 jars. Her daddy walked in and said, what are you going to do with 550 jars of jelly? I said, you're going to eat it. He said, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. We threw away over half of it, didn't we? Because it turned so to sugar. Though. It was good. It was good. Guys, we're going to be right back in about 10 minutes. We're going to have a cobbler coming out of the oven, so stay tuned. We'll be back in just seconds. We're going to share another secret for you at Harris Farm. See you soon. Hi, I'm Sherry Martin, back at Harris Farm, and I promised you I'm going to share a secret with you. I I'm stingy, aren't I? A little no. bit. Yeah, a little bit. No. I like to save money on gifts, though. You know that. Yes, but you're a very giving person. Okay, but I am stingy when it comes to giving gifts. I love to share myself. 
And part of myself is photography. Now your daughter, Tori, is going to SCAD, yes. and she critiques my work, and sometimes she says, Nanny. And sometimes she says, Nanny, that's really good. That's really good. So um, one of the secrets I have for gift giving is buy something they love. You know, y'all started my Iron Skillet collection in 1978 because I owned a restaurant called the Iron Skillet Restaurant. And people knew, if you wanted to shop for me, buy me an Iron Skillet from this size to this size. Mm -hmm. I still have them and I love them. I adore my Iron Skillets. But I learned as you get older in life, you don't need all this stuff. So I started taking pictures. And I might take pictures of rocks out at the farm. I'll go take pictures of uh, the bottom side of the barn. And um, Tori came in last week with her project for this year, her final, and what was it of? Their feet. Feet. Their different feet. Mine happened to be in the grocery store in my photo, so they're pretty cool. Right. And it is a neat gift. I, I never thought about it, but I have given gifts of flowers at Harris Farm. I love when the iris bloom. That's my favorite time, guys. I go to Alabama once a year, and I find little old ladies who go to Collinsville Trade Day and sell their iris bulbs. And I buy the bulbs and bring them back to Harris Farm and plant them. Love doing that. And love sharing the photography with them. So, um, guys, if you get a gift from me, it'll probably be inexpensive, but there'll be a lot of thought put into right. it. And, and you know one of my favorite gifts, Mrs. Ethel Peppers, remember her? Peppers, my yes. next door neighbor had this bowl. And I love salt glass pottery. So I had offered to paint her living room and she wanted to pay me. And I said, no, Miss Peppers, I don't want any money. She gave me this bowl. I treasure this bowl. Do you remember? This bowl, and this was her great-great-grandmother's. Wow. So there's there's no amount of money. And she was very old when she gave you the bowl. Right. So. And I was very young. Right. <laughs> but there's no amount of money that could replace this bowl. There's so many memories. And, you know, memories are what Harris Farm is about. Mm -hmm. And um, you and I, neither one, throw anything away, do we? It's a problem. We need a group. We need a group. It's a problem. And, and my sister, Lila, happens to have the same problem. This year, Lila made me a cookbook. Guys, I want you to do this. I want you to make this this year's project. Do a family cookbook. Share your family recipes and your family memories. When my sister gave me this, I cried and I cried and I cried because this was so much time, so much thought, pictures of us when we were children, pictures of our grandmother, Absolutely, so much love went into this cookbook. And, and every day, I sit and look at the cookbook. And I laugh about it because Lila and I were separated for 35 years because of a really bad divorce. And when she and I got back together, we shared recipes. We both loved gospel music, and we both loved the same recipes. So it's been a great, th this is my favorite memory. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite memory. And it didn't cost her a lot of money, but it took a lot of time. A you know, she, time. she worked hard on this. She worked hard on this, and I was so proud of it. And, and this year, for Mother's Day, we designed a website. Our website is www.heartofthehomeatetc.com. That's what I gave my sister for Mother's Day. It took a lot of work. Mary worked about, what, six weeks on that website? And I drove her crazy while she was doing it. But we wanted it to be something that you would laugh at, you would enjoy, and you would go to often. So you get to see our videos of previous... Awesome little cooking segments. On absolutely, it. absolutely. We have about 20 cooking segments of videos, and we have flower arranging, we have decorating tips, and the key to this is we add to it weekly. So as we do Heart of the Home, we add it to the website. Driving so, Mary crazy. Absolutely, driving Mary crazy. But... She, she, has, she has stood the test, hasn't she? Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. And when Tori comes home from college, we're going to use her too, and we're going to have her doing photography for us. Mm -hmm. So guys, remember, you can share yourself. You can share the memories. There's not a lot of cost in it, is there? Yeah. And, and with digital cameras, buy yourself a digital camera. Now, in just a second, we're going to take out what we're going to share today. We're going to share a peach cobbler. We're going to send it to Mark Whitfield at Jasper Banking Company. We hope they enjoy it. And you told me you wanted some. Yes. Are we going to sneak you out a little corner of that yes. peach cobbler? Okay, guys, hang on. We're going to take the cobbler out in just a second. Well, Angela, it's hot out of the oven, and it smells great. Now, remember, guys, this simple recipe, cheap, cheap canned peaches in light syrup, brown sugar, and adjust the recipe to the size you need. I made a big one because I'm giving it away today. If I make a small one, I use a stick of butter, 
three quarter cup of sugar, three quarter cup of flour. Adjust your recipe, use equal amounts of sugar and flour, and then the liquid, the only liquid, remember this, is the butter you use. Now, this has been a favorite at Harris Farm forever, and I make it often. It's so simple, it's so easy, and when I show up at Mount Vernon Homecoming with this, it won't last five minutes. We'll be back at Harris Farm, and we'll be in the new house sometimes. We love this old farm, but we also love the new kitchen, don't we? Yes, so, we love the new kitchen. We love the new kitchen. Are we spoiled? We may it's, be spoiled. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Stay tuned every week to Heart of the Home. We'll be back. Stay tuned, everybody. Come back every week to Heart of the Home for cooking and decorating tips. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Let's, Let's eat.